Hello, uh, Fear the Meerkat here. Welcome to the second episode of my Let's Play of Star Trek The Next Generation, A Final Unity. And if you remember correctly, we just arrived at Merton's Orbital Station. So it's time to show off this, the transporter. Alright, now on harder difficulty settings you can beam choose which uh, characters you beam down to uh, play the mission. Basically, normally there are two characters you really need. You really need Worf and you really need Dr. Crusher and you really need uh, Geordi LaForge on this mission. There's just no way to win without them. And you can uh, you can talk to them, and you can look at stuff. Uh, you can change which character it is, and depending on which character it is, they'll say different things. You can press things, and you can walk to places. So let's. It didn't work. Try that. Sometimes they just say that. This is annoying. But never mind, as you can see, we have a tricorder, we have a medical tricorder. You normally want Dr. Crusher for that, and you have a phaser and a medical kit. And you I can. I don't think that's the best thing to do. Adjust. I'll be quiet. You can adjust uh, the, uh, the power of the tricorder, but you normally just need it on stand. I will advise you to put it onto the uh, yellow setting, which is kill. It's not necessary, it's not very Star trek -y. E. E. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, so, let's get going. So, yeah, by the way, as I said, uh, you will need certain characters though, so it's quite difficult uh, on a difficulty setting if you, um, you can also press shift to make them move quicker. It's quite difficult if you're on uh, another difficulty setting because then you need to just choose your characters and you might accidentally not use the white characters. So. She's got multiple fractures in both legs. The bones in the lower part of her left leg are shattered. She's in shock and there's some internal bleeding. All things considered, she's very lucky. I can take care of the worst of her injuries here, but I'd like to get her to sickbay. I don't really like the decor of this room, to be honest. I mean, it's a very practical room, I can see that. It's not designed to be a pleasant looking room, but... damage this station suffered, I'm surprised it's still holding together. It's Beverly Crutcher, the Enterprise oh, and the Chief no, Medical no, no, Officer. With uh, all the damage this station suffered, I'm surprised uh, it's still holding together. Well, I can't really show you this. I, I was going to see if one of them could point out something about this. The cable has been cut through. Never mind. Anyway, for now, go back. I was going to see if one of them could say something like, hey, let's cut the cable in order to fix this problem, but. free that trap crewman. What if we use the station's transporter to remove the cable? There With we the go. the sensors out, we'll have to manually acquire the cable's coordinates for beaming. Right, that's what I needed him to do. 
That is going to talk to the tricorder. She's alive. These life signs are pretty faint. Yeah, one well, thing. We can use this tricorder reading to get a transporter lock. That's a high capacity data transfer cable, probably a main communications line. Readings show damage characteristic of a phased plasma beam. This cable's built for handling information, not energy. I'm surprised it didn't just vaporize when it was hit. Hmm. Well, maybe the uh, good builders. Touching the door will work. You can actually touch doors, believe it or not. Anyway. That takes care of the worst of her injuries. She's coming around now. Street shooter? Ah, but not. How do you feel? I'll manage. You're from Starfleet, aren't you? Yes. We're from the Enterprise. Try not to move. I've stopped the bleeding and given you something for the pain, but your legs are in bad shape. Mm, you're right. Multiple fractures, probable lacerations. I'm Anna Bennett, Chief Medical Officer. We've got a lot of wounded here, some worse off than me. How many can you evacuate? Our sick bay can handle any emergency cases. The rest we can beam down to the planet, but we can't begin transport until we lower the station's shields. We can't do that until we stabilize or jettison the power core. Now, this is something I've been wondering. Why don't they just send all of the emergency cases to, uh, to the planet uh, down below? That Surely they'd be better at it because they know the physiology of this race, whatever. It is. I mean, it's possible they are just humans, or they have this information on their computers, but still, why not just bring them all to the planet? What happened to the rest of the crew? I can't believe they just left you here injured like this. Most of them probably escaped when Commander Wilde gave the order to evacuate after the first attack. But I know many are trapped, and can't reach the shuttle base. After the first attack, were you attacked more than once? We never knew what hit us. There was an initial attack which lasted maybe ten minutes. Later there was a hull breach and the power systems went crazy. I don't remember anything after that. I passed out. I'm gonna... Oh no, I can't switch to... another character. In a minute. Hopefully, we'll have good news about the power core by then. All right. I think I'll be fine for now. I think he might be a better person for talking to, actually. I want to ask us something. We'll come back for you as soon as the station's out of danger. Darn it. We're lucky. We won't have to jettison the power core. There's no way to know until I've had a look at it. All right. As you can see, we need to get the white right person talking to her. Or not. We'll be back to check on you. Well, right I guess you'll just learn the same okay. things that we've just sort of told her. All right. I think I'll be fine. <sighs> All right, I'm going to keep it on Riker for now. As you can see, it's been a long time since I last uh, nasty this. And I thought that we could go on to uh, the catwalk, but we can't. So there you go. Now he's not going to talk for it. Looks look like the power surge knocked out the hollow table. I could fix it if we had more time, or if I had a flux router, I could bypass the damage completely. 
Ah, oh, yeah, you never have a flux router on you when you need it. It's dead. Power surges have disabled most of the station's primary systems. Well, it doesn't look like there's a lot we can find out here. Uh, go to engineering, I guess. Huh. Amazing. It's using a plasma suspension beam to draw energy straight out of the main conduits. Hmm. Amazing. It's using all a plasma right, All right, all right, yeah. Uh... Hmm. So... That doesn't tell me much. Uh... Okay. It's... Wait a minute. I had readings of neutronium hull and internal energy, but now all I can pick up are natural elements. It's sending false readings to our tricorders. It's like a chameleon. It disguises itself perfectly. If we weren't here to see it, we'd never know it was here. It could probably fool our ship sensors just as easily. This chameleon field seems to take a fraction of a second to adjust to new scanning frequencies. If I set the tricorder to randomly shift frequencies at high speed... There. I'm getting a partial reading now. I've just scrubbed my coffee. You didn't need to know that. Just thought I'd tell you anyway. Well, this is this is not that useful to me. Um, one percent of it is gold. Huh? That must be expensive. Part of it is water. Well, that seems kind of weird to me, but I don't know much about chemistry. <laughs> what? What? I I don't really know what to say here. Um. Unidentifiable compounds. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Yep, it's a neutronium hull, all right, and a powerful energy source. I've never seen that much power in such a small package before. Ha, well, that's what she said. Um, I think I stole that joke from someone else. Never mind. Uh, so what's it doing? No, no. Readings show massive fluctuations in the power level. Can't imagine what could cause something like this. There's a tremendous drain, then it cuts off suddenly and even reverses slightly, almost as if something were breathing the energy. Severe power oscillations put a lot of stress on the containment field. If the field breaches, this station's had it. Hmm. I'm not sure if it would be sensible shoot it until I know more about it. See, where can we go? Let's go to the lab for now. Mm. A graviton probe. That could be useful when you're dealing with the gravitic power source. Pulse negators are used for cancelling fluctuations in pulsed energy systems. A wave reduction converter. Hmm. We might be able to use this. It's a specialized tool for dampening graviton flux waves. Oh, I always wanted more of those. Why not? That's a phase inverter coupling. It's for reconnecting multi-phase energy channels and correcting flux modulation problems. I don't think we'll need this plasma shunt. The main power source here is definitely not plasma-based. A flux router is for really delicate work. Well, you know what? I'm going to take everything. Work. Well, obviously, I'm not trying to take the thing it's resting on. I'm just trying to take the thing itself. Uh, what have we got? A bunch of panels. We have to get past that machine out there. It's blocking the way to primary engineering. Ideas. We do not have sufficient weaponry to destroy the intruder. What is it doing here? It appeared to be drawing plasma from the third conduit cluster. Well, that's it. It's collecting energy. Maybe if we can temporarily shut off the power, it'll leave. Make it think the wells run dry, eh? It's worth a try. There should be emergency shutoff controls around here somewhere. Right. Start looking. Well, it's a little unfamiliar, but... I think I can control the station's power flow from this panel. No, I'm not going to talk to the panel. 
Enterprise, did you pick that up? We have detected a small object departing the station at high speed. Sensors identify it as a small asteroid. You've got to be kidding. Apparently, this object is capable of sending false readings to our sensors. That asteroid is a sophisticated device. It's using a chameleon field to send false readings to the sensors. Interesting. The object is accelerated to warp speed. Yeah, most small asteroids don't do that. I'd like to chase it down, but the station isn't stable yet. See how long you can track it. Acknowledged. The card out. All right, let's see if we can go to the core control. You have an uncanny sense of timing. I beg your pardon? Timing, I said. You have fine timing. The one instant I cannot afford to be distracted, and in barges all of Starfleet. Tight the crate were only four people from Starfleet. You can't fit all with Starfleet in here. Now, for this, you're definitely going to want the forwards to talk to him. Remember that if you're playing along with me. I'm Jordy LaForge, Chief Engineer of the Enterprise. We're here to help. Thanks for the offer, but I haven't time to instruct Starfleet in the intricacies of singularity-driven power generation. So kindly stop distracting me. Tempting as it is to be rude to him. Dr. Greens, I'm chief engineer on a galaxy-class starship. It's my job to work miracles. Have you seen a system like this before? I'm not sure. It looks like some kind of gravity wave power source. But how can you generate gravity waves of this magnitude? A little something I got from the Romulans. We've got an artificial singularity bottled up down there, and by varying the strength of the containment field, I was able to increase the magnitude of the gravity waves. Oh, the I, did, I got think the energy that. flow out of phase with the containment field. Ooh. We've got to get the energy flow back in phase immediately. Not bad for a Starfleet officer. Hm. You may be of some use after all. You see, the only reason the field is held up this long is because I've been here manually compensating for the fluctuations. Sounds like you could use an extra pair of hands. Listen, I'll handle the conduit. You maintain the containment field. I'll keep the containment field up as long as I can. I see you already have a phase inverter and a wave reduction converter. Good. You'll need them. A phase inverter? But that'll just make the fluctuations reverse. Unless... Ah, if we use the wave reduction converter to dampen them, the reversal will actually work in our favor. Smarter than you look. Install the phase inverter coupling in the damaged area. Then use the wave reduction converter to bring the fluctuations down. If I can keep the containment field up, we should make it. I'm on my way. Right, at this point you might want to write down what he just said. Uh, not, I'm on my way. That, that's fairly useless to you. And, um, just make sure you get these the right way around. In fact, I'm going to save it. In fact. I'm keeping in these uh, noises of me pressing buttons on my keyboard because it sounds all sort of mid-90s, I feel. Right. So, am I converted? No.
I understand it. Enterprise. Picard here. We've stabilized the power core. Ah. The outer shields should be lowered now. Confirmed. We'll start evacuating the wounded immediately. Great. That means we're done here. Beam us up. Okay. Now, I haven't decided whether I have or not. I may have cut a little bit of that out we because of hailed, my sir. mistakes. Is Chancellor Dana. On screen. Captain Picard, you have my warmest thanks. We had really given up hope. We are pleased to have been able to help. Have you recovered all the pods yet? My staff tells me all the evacuees are safe and sound. And my compliments to your medical staff. Our surgeons were quite impressed with Dr. Crusher's handiwork. I'll pass that along. The last of the injured personnel should be beamed down within the hour. I think we can handle it from here. By the way, Dr. Greens personally extends his gratitude. He felt he owed you and your crew an apology. Tell him we accept his apology. We got out. What are your orders, Captain? Uh, as I was saying, I may have cut a little bit of that out, and I'm I'm gonna tell you when I cut something out because that only seems fair. So um, it was just me wandering around trying to find where to use the ray for reduction converters. So. Set course for Horse Three, Warp Five. Aye, sir. Or well, I didn't cut it out. Engage. Only you can tell. So, yeah, at this point, I guess I might as well talk about the game a little bit. I last played this when I was 18. I think I first played it when I was about 15. I like the way they've made it as close to the series as possible. So, the series was never about spaceships you chat each other or people um, engage in combat and so I think the fact that they made it a puzzle game uh, makes it work well um, fits well with that and they've given it the same sort of structure as the episode so you've got the sort of prologue and then you've got the main titles and then you've got the rest of the story unfolding you even have an on-screen title uh, a final unity for the episode so they made it very much like the TV series I think this is one of the very few Star Trek games that has gotten that right and that's one of the reasons I like it it's not perfect but it's a pretty good uh, game this and it's a pretty good approximation of the TV series I might talk more about that later when I have the time Standard orbit. Greeting, Shaynok. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Captain, how may I assist you? Um, but some of the graphics, admittedly, aren't fantastic, but no mind. What brings an archaeologist of your stature to such a remote planet? I am excavating the ruins of a Chodak outpost. The Federation Archaeological Survey is sponsoring my work. Who are the Chodak? An ancient race. At their peak, the Chodak occupied most of what is now the Romulan Empire. But I thought all known Chodak ruins were on the other side of the neutral zone. This is the first Chodak site found in Federation space. It was my good fortune to discover it. I have to say, they did much better with the backgrounds, uh, which I think look really good, than they did with the animation for the characters. I mean, Sh Shaynok looks really uh, unrealistic when he's talking. What have you found so far? A great deal, actually. I have uncovered evidence of an extensive administrative system, as well as examples of Chodak computer technology quite similar to our own isolinear rods. Intriguing. Such devices would be among the oldest known examples of isolinear technology in the galaxy. I hope to confirm that fact. I sent several rods to the Merton's orbital station for testing. 
They've developed a gravitic stress dating method which is extremely accurate. However, I have not yet received their results. I'm afraid we have got some bad news for you, Shaynok. Merton's station has been attacked. It was almost completely destroyed. Indeed. That is a great loss. Okay, time to get down to the point. Shaynok, we have several Garidian refugees aboard who are trying to find something called the Fifth Scroll. They said you might be able to help. Possibly. I once did extensive research on the Lawgiver and the Followers. They fled into what is now Federation space a thousand years ago, bearing the Fifth Scroll with them. We've heard of them. So where did these Followers go? I never found the Followers colony. But your friends should not lose hope. In my search, I stumbled on one of the Followers' ancient ships. The logs indicated that they had found an M-class planet suitable for colonization. If I remember the series well enough, an M-class planet is a planet that's basically similar to Earth in terms of atmosphere and so on. Thank you for your help, Shaynok. Good luck. And to you, Captain. Live long and prosper. Uh, I think, what are your orders, Captain? I think that's just about where we should uh, leave Set it. Course for the Ruinor sector and, and resume our patrol along the neutral zone. So I will, um, I will be uh, continuing this in the next episode, I guess.